What's up everybody, Gen X Dividend Investor here. In this video I'm going to tell you about the Apple stock split that is happening on August 28th and will explain what a split is and why companies do them, highlighting my Apple position in my dividend portfolio as an example of the before and after, as well as show you a new awesome milestone my Apple position just got to. And I will show you data on what happened the last four times Apple has split in their history and will teach you something that many dividend investors don't know. Finally, I'll close this video off with another incredible investing story about a parking lot attendant who never made more than $12 an hour, but who invested his way into an awesome net worth. So stay tuned, I think you'll really love this video. Alright, let's look at the top two positions in my dividend portfolio, those being Apple and Microsoft. If you're a veteran here, you'll notice a few new columns I've added to my spreadsheet, such as average cost per share and cost basis and unrealized gains and such. So at first blush you would see that Apple is up around 200% in the short time I've had it, but Microsoft is only up 28%, and I used air quotes when I said only 28%. So you would logically think that Apple has been a better return for me than Microsoft, but that's not the case. When I look at my portfolio, I know that Microsoft is actually my best return, but that isn't reflected here. So why is that? Well, because I originally bought Microsoft over 25 years ago, like most of my dividend stocks, but then I liquidated my entire portfolio a couple years ago and then bought back into the same positions a short time after I sold everything. So some of my Microsoft shares would have an actual return of something like an insane 2,000%. That whole story of why I sold out everything only to turn around and limp back into my position sounds insane, but watch my video called The Time I Sold All My Stocks to understand why I did that. So most of my dividend stocks I bought back into in late 2018 and early 2019 but I made the mistake on Microsoft of waiting longer to get in, thinking I'd get in a more attractive price by waiting. So that was dumb. I finally got back into Microsoft and now have an almost 30% return in under a year versus Apple where I have a 200% return in a year and a half. But that 30% that you now see on my spreadsheet represents what I made since I rebought into Microsoft, not my actual return I enjoyed. So the cool new milestone on Apple is the fact that I finally got a position to be worth 200k in my dividend portfolio. Okay, let's talk about splits. A couple days ago Apple announced that they are doing the fifth stock split in their history and they are doing a 4 for 1 split. What does that mean? It means that for every share of Apple stock that you own, as of the record date of August 24th, you will end up having 4 shares as of the X date, which is August 31st, 2020. Now do you get why I'm called Gen X Dividend Investor? I was born in Generation X and I am an X Dividend Investor, thus Gen X Dividend Investor. So that's why I'm Gen X and not Gen X. So after the split, each of your shares will be worth one quarter of what each one was before the split, so your overall portfolio value of Apple stock won't change any. You basically get four times as many shares, each of which is worth one quarter of what it used to be worth. So before the split, I have $200,141.35 worth of Apple in my portfolio, and after the split, I'll still have around 200 k worth of Apple. But before the split, I have 435.0521 shares of Apple, and after the 4 for 1 split, I will have 1,740.2084 shares of it. Before the split, on the day I recorded this, Apple stock was around $460 a share, and if the stock split occurred today, then the share price would be around $115 after the split. Thus, the overall market cap for Apple won't change. Market cap is the number of shares outstanding multiplied by stock price. When people say Apple is almost a $2 trillion company, what they mean is if you take the number of shares outstanding of Apple and multiply that by the share price, it equals almost $2 trillion, which makes it the world's most valuable company. So that $2 trillion also won't change just because of a split. You'll see that the dividend yield won't change due to a split, but the amount each share pays will change. So right now Apple pays $3.28 per share per year. So that means at a price of $460 that Apple's dividend yield is 0.713%. After the split, each share will pay $0.82 cents per share per year, and assuming a $115 stock price, we see that the split won't change dividend yield, because $0.82 cents divided by 115 is still 0.713. Right now I get $1,426.98 of dividends from Apple each year. After the split, I'll still get $1,426.98 of dividends from Apple each year. So the split won't change how much dividends they pay you in a year. And this is a great learning lesson for some folks. Some dividend sites will make a split look like a dividend cut happened, and other dividend sites normalize the dividend to account for splits that happened. So when you are looking at graphs of dividend or amounts paid out, you need to dig deeper because something that looks like a cut might instead just be a split that happened that the website didn't normalize for. Speaking of splits, Tesla announced a 5 for 1 stock split that should also take place at the end of August. And for you option players out there, splits will also change option prices. Option prices are set by supply and demand, so the values should probably end up being one-fourth of their previous value. So a $2 option would be something like $0.50. Cents. 
the multiplier and delivery terms stay the same and the standard contract is still for 100 shares. So what do I think about the split? I think it's a brilliant move. Splits have fallen mostly out of fashion over the last 10 years, but I think it's a great way to drive more capital into quality companies like Apple. I think that some of the newer generation of investors will be more compelled to move into stocks if they have a lower price for a variety of reasons. Number one, because psychologically it feels cheaper. Number two is because some people still don't have access to buying fractional shares, especially outside the USA, so this will allow access to stocks that were previously out of reach. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Google and Amazon follow suit. Now let's take a look at what Apple stock did around the time of their previous splits. First, to identify when a company has done splits, I like to go to splithistory.com and look up their ticker in question. So we see that Apple has done four total splits that occurred in 1987, the year 2000, 2005, and 2014. So I went into Google Sheets and I pulled one year of stock price data into it from the date of each of those splits, and then I made a graph of the stock price, including the trend line, so I could visually see what the stock did after the splits. So in 1987, prices continued to trend down slightly, and then more significantly in 2000, which makes sense because of the dot-com crash, and then in 2005 and in 2014, it kept trending up after the splits. Of course, market forces and dynamics are unique to each time frame, as are our business's fundamentals. So some people think we'll see a spike after the upcoming Apple split, and then that spike will settle down back to the normal trend. Me, I'm not concerned if there is or there isn't a spike, as I hope to hold Apple for the rest of my life, and hope my kids hold it for their lives as well. Let's take a look at some of Apple's dividend metrics I care about. Apple has an awesome payout ratio of 25%, an incredible 5-year dividend CAGR of 10.5%, but they're only at 8 consecutive years of dividend growth. But with their massive cash reserves, I believe Apple will keep driving that dividend up. How has their stock been doing in the last 12 months? They are barely below their 52-week high of $464 and above their 52-week low of $199, and they have a high P.E. of around 34. Let's look at their total returns. We see that over the last 25 years, Apple has had an absolutely stellar annualized return of 26% a year versus the great 9% of the S&P 500, which means you would have made 37 times the returns of the S&P if you had invested in Apple 25 years ago. Zowie, Shaggy, Zowie. Let's see how their stock trend line looks. So a quick glance tells us that Apple has a great stock trend line. Let's take a look at their dividend payouts. So this graph highlights exactly what I'm talking about. If you looked at this, you might think, crap, Apple did a dividend cut in 2014 because look at how things dropped. But as we learned a moment ago, we don't jump to that conclusion when we see a cut. Instead, we dig into it and we see that Apple did a 7 for 1 split in 2014. So instead, they didn't cut, and instead, they've actually done a nice trend line of dividend increases. Let's check out their EPS trends. So Apple has an awesome EPS trend. Now, we know that Apple's growth isn't coming from their iPhone sales at this point, and instead of driving more revenue from their services, but if they keep doing massive buybacks, then that will help drive up their EPS, even on lower normal earnings. Speaking of buybacks, how are their shares outstanding trends looking? So as we would anticipate, Apple has been driving down their share count, especially since 2012, which makes sense as that's around when Tim Cook took over and his financial foresight has successfully influenced Apple to its current spot as the world's most valuable company. Let's see how their assets are trending compared to their liabilities. So an awesome trend, but the real test for Apple is happening now without having their iPhone workhorse driving up numbers like before. Let's see what they can do from here. Now let's look at their net income. So a redonkulous net income trend which helps explain why Apple has over 100 billion cash in the bank, making it one of the world's most cash-rich companies. I wouldn't be surprised if Apple did an interesting acquisition at some point. Let's check out their price to free cash flow ratio trends. So this is beautiful and helps explain why people love to invest in Apple. A crazy low ratio here which tells me that Apple's price is still relatively low to its cash flow. Awesome. Let's look at their debt trends. So Apple's taken on a bit of debt. Not that they need to in my opinion, but clearly they feel they can use that debt to fuel their growth, and they have ample cash covering them. Now I'd like to thank a recent Patreon champion who signed up, so thank you to Zach John, who is a YouTube channel you should check out as he starts his dividend investing journey. I'll put a link to his channel in my description. Now I'm going to tell you about the mind-blowing story of a parking lot attendant named Earl, who never made more than $12 an hour or $20,000 a year, and yet built up a net worth of over a half million dollars. Earl's YouTube story was shared to me by someone on my Discord named Lewis. Thanks, Lewis. Now, poor Earl was dyslexic, so he didn't feel his job prospects were too hot, and he ended up doing low-wage manual labor stuff. In the 1960s, he was making only $80 a week, yet had a family with three kids. That equates to $650 a week in today's dollars, which is also around $30,000 a year. He invested $25 each month into a mutual fund. That is equivalent to about $200 a month now, or about $50 a week now. After 15 years, his net worth had grown to $25,000. Then he decided to start investing in individual stocks as well. He bought companies like IBM and Coca-Cola, but instead of taking cash from the dividends, he dripped them. And he did that for decades. 
Now his stock portfolio is over a half million dollars, his house is 100% paid off, and he has zero debt. All of that on $12 an hour. So how did Earl get his investing knowledge? Well, the parking lot he worked in was in the financial district, so he would pick the brains of his customers who parked in his lot. Like I said in my last video, the people you surround yourself with will rub off on you. So surround yourself and interact with quality people. If you have some loser friends who are going nowhere, ask yourself if they are positively influencing you. And if the answer is no, figure out how to surround yourself with people who are actively seeking to better their lives. I invite you to join my Dividend Investing Discord, which is the world's largest dividend investing chat server, where we have thousands of investors on it, and you'll have the opportunity to interact with others who are also passionate about improving their financial futures. If you join up, you need to click on the heart icon to self-authorize your account, which helps me weed out most of the bots that try to join, or you can wait for me to manually authorize you. I've put a variety of anti-bot things in place, and I routinely delete anyone who comes on who spams products or services. Also, if you become a Patreon member, then you have access to private channels on this Discord as well. So tons of free stuff, and then a few perks for those that contribute. So what else did Earl do? He started gifting shares from his portfolio to friends and family. He also started an investing club at his church with the goal of getting every member of the church to own stock. Earl used to say that he was the dumbest kid in school, but he got the gift of being able to listen to others and then act on what he heard. And that reminds me of what I said in my last video, which is that everyone has talents, you just need to dig to find them. And something you might call a weakness or disability might just end up being a major strength if you know how to use it. Think about Earl the next time you feel down on something you might currently feel is a disability you have. So what can we learn from Earl's story? Number one, invest. Number two, from his own words, stop working so hard and let your money work for you. I actually think it's good to work hard. Number three, realize that your disabilities could be your greatest strengths. And number four, pay it forward. And I want to leave you with this quote, the pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like on this video and I'll talk to you again real soon. I am not a financial advisor and these videos are for entertainment, inspiration, and educational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I am only sharing my opinion with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments.